This is Andy Fiora for Boxing Social and I'm delighted to be joined by the gorilla, John Ryder. John, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm all good, thanks. Good to hear you doing well. Obviously, down here at Brentwood Centre, we weren't really sure as to who you'd come down to support. So, what are you doing knocking about at the show? Uh, I've come down to support Bradley Skeet, just to um, see, him, see him get a good win tonight and a nice, nice win before Christmas. Bradley's obviously you know, his second fight since his defeat um, to Kerman Leharaga. I hope I've said his name right. How difficult can it be, you know, you, you yourself, you've had defeats through your career to keep yourself motivated to think eventually something will come good and you can rebuild? Uh, listen, Bradley's had a, a good career so far, do you know what I mean? He's, 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 he's been to the Lions Denver before, he's gone to Birmingham and beat Sam Egerton. Um I'm not even going to say his name, but the, the European champion, he was a bit of an unknown quantity and what a fighter he's turned out to be, do you know what I mean? He's, he, he, beat Bradley in, in good fashion. I don't think Bradley was himself that night, but only only he knows that. But um, I mean, you've seen what he's done to Frankie Gavin, and listen, if you knock out that many people, you've got to be able to punch, haven't you? It's just something which I was going to bring up later on. Obviously, Frankie fought uh, La Haraga um, only a few weeks ago now, and he, he missed weight by nearly five pounds. What did you make of that when, when that came out? Uh, well, I don't know. I did read that about his issues getting to Spain and whatnot, so I don't wish to comment too much, do you know what I mean? But yeah, he knows deep down what what went wrong and what he could have done differently. Now obviously, to move on to yourself now, looking back, you've, you've mandatory position for WA, super, super, world, uh, super middleweight world title got there in the end. What is it, What has Eddie said in terms of trying to make a fight or when you may look to make good on the mandatory position? Do you know what? I think it's always just been a case of wait, wait this year out and then, I mean, with the likes of the fight tonight, with Rocky Fielding fighting Canelo, you've you, you got to see what happens there. Will, if Canelo wins, will he keep hold of the title? Will he move back down and vacate? Then it frees up a title for me to fight for if, um, if Callum's taking his time because I've, I've heard that he's not going to fight till, till mid middle of the year. So just I, I want to be active next year and ho hopefully early in the year I can get out again for a big fight. Is that something that you'd, you'd be more than happy to look to do and take on? If obviously Canelo's to beat Rocky, take on the WBA regular against whoever would be lined up to, to fight yourself? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's, the, like, it's, it's progression, progressing the way I want to progress. And at the end of the day, you win that, you're still a world champion. And that, that's, that's what my ultimate goal is. Do you feel frustrated at all because you're kind of in, this, in the middle of a situation? Obviously, Callum's got his ambitions to unify and to, to fight the, the, the largest names in the division. Canelo's obviously been mentioned as well for himself and Rocky fighting Canelo tonight. You're kind of in, that, in, in, in limbo a little bit as to you've got a way for other results and other people to handle their business until you can actually try to make good on your, your own situation. No, not really. I mean, I'm in a great position now. I've been in terrible positions before, coming off losses and being in limbo, not knowing what's coming next, what if I'm going to get to fight again or not. So at now I'm number one in the WBA and I'm in the best position I ever have been and something has to happen in the next couple of months and there will be a big fight for me. Is this, is this run that you're on now, do you feel that there's actually like no pressure on you because you've had those, those losses and you know that because of the position you're in now, you don't necessarily need to think too far ahead and you don't need to worry about another loss because you've possibly achieved more than what four, five, six fights ago you probably imagined you would have? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've, I'm at the, the top of the sport now, really. The, the, the biggest prize is in front of me of a world title. So it's all about enjoying these moments. The, the pressure is off now. I've, I've, I've probably put too much pressure on myself in the past and that's why I've took defeats a lot harder than I should have done and just come back. But I've worked hard, I've come back and I'm, I'm, I'm getting the results that I need and I'm, I'm in a position that I've always wanted to be. Obviously, the big one later on in the night, uh, Canelo Fielding. What are your thoughts on it? We're only a matter of hours away now. Just a great fight. You've got to take your hat off to Fielding. I mean, he's not just gone in there and took on anyone. He's, he's, he's gone to Germany, won the world title off the champion. Now he's going to New York to fight Canelo Alvarez, the pound for pound best boxer in the world and pound for pound one of the greatest of all time. Who are you leaning towards? If you, you know, what's your prediction on how the fight will play out? Uh, you can't help but lean towards Canelo he, just because of his who he is and what he's done but it's a tools race isn't it and it's, Rocky's the bigger man he's, he's got the puncher's chance and who knows 
Uh, last week as well, we saw uh, Carl Brook take on Michael Zarafa. Did you catch a foot or what did you make of it? I, I saw bits of it and it's just hard. I mean, Kel's been operating at a high level. He's dropped down a bit and it's not brought the best out of him. And he's also working with a new trainer, so I think you just got to wait to see them adjustments. And people are expecting miracles overnight. And to, these, to build new relationships with new trainers takes time. And give him, give him an upcoming fight, so you'll probably see the best of him. The fight, everybody's waiting to see whether or not it would eventually be made. He's obviously Cal Brook versus Amir Khan. Do you think we will see that? And obviously, there's been a little video released this week of Amir Khan talking about Cal Brook. I don't know if you've seen it or if you've got any thoughts on the, the stuff that he was talking about. Uh, I don't know. So I did see that Khan was going to fight Terence Crawford. I don't know how much truth there is in that. Um, if he fights Crawford, then I don't ever think it will happen with him and Cal. But hopefully it does. And I mean, 2019 would be great if it does. And obviously, just a couple of weeks before, well, a week before Brook, and obviously two weeks before today, Fury Wilder. What were your thoughts on that one? Just, just a real shame, really. After what Fury's gone through in his, his life outside the ring, it's just um, it's a big victory in that itself to come back from that and to to even be fighting again, let alone at that stage, on that on that magnitude. Do you know what I mean? But um, he done great. I mean, he, he should be champion of the world now. Looking at a, a big unification clash with Josh, Anthony Joshua, so. He's not. He's got to go back and right the wrong, and um, it's not 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 a wrong on, on his account, but just a, a wrong doing by the judges, and then put that right, and then the big fights really loom for him. Who would you like to see? You know, out of Wilder, AJ Fury. Out, if you had to pick two of them to fight next, who would you pick? I just want to see uh, AJ and Fury. I think that's the biggest fight out there, and we're we're lucky to be British and to to be here in the UK, and knowing that we're we'll, if that if he puts that. That, that, that wrong right that we will see that fight on home soil and probably with the biggest fight in British history and next week we've got two big cards on we've got one in Manchester for Warrington Frampton and in London for Dillian Watt and Derek Chisora what are your thoughts on both of those fights and how do you see them playing out uh, both great fights I mean we see the Chisora White the first fight it was a great fight it had to happen again it took his time um, you can never write off Trezor, do you know what I mean? Everyone thought Trezor was finished and over the hill and he's, he's gone and done that to Carlos Takam. Sensational finish. Dillian White just looks like he keeps on improving, improving all the time and he's just, he knows there's big fights looming for him. So it would be a great fight. I'm really struggling to pick a winner, but I just think the fans are in for a treat. What about Warrington Frampton? Another one, that's, that's an impossible one to call, do you know what I mean? Um, Look what Warrington done to Lee Selby. I know Lee Selby was like really weight drained and he's, he's now moving up, but he just he wasn't going to be denied that night. He was going to do what he had to do. You do have to nail him to the canvas to keep him down that night. He was just in unbelievable form, wasn't he? So Frampton's going to have to be at his best. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a young, hungry lion in Josh Warrington. Frampton's been to the to the world before on, on a number of times and, and shown what he's about. So again, they're going for a treat with that fight. Well, John, I know thought, but no, it's nearly coming to an end now, so I'm going to let you shoot us. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. No worries, thank you for having me.